Section 7.1, Parametric Equations. And this is from OpenStax Calculus Volume 2. So at the bottom of every page, there is a link where you can go and download the full text, and I would definitely suggest you do that. So to begin this section, we have a definition, parametric equations. So if x and y are continuous functions of t on an interval i, then the equations x equals x of t and y equals y of t are called parametric equations, and t is called the parameter. The set of points x, y obtained as t varies over this interval is the graph, or at the parametric curve for these equations. The idea here is we have two functions that depend on some other quantity. Now, on example one here, we're given two equations, one to represent the x values, one to represent the y values, and a range for t values. So what we're going to do is begin with a chart. We have our t values, our x values, and I'll go ahead and call it x of t and y of t. Now we're going to evaluate from negative 3 to 2. So I'll just go ahead and take these integer values there, going to 2. Now we want to plug the t value into each of those individual equations. So if t is negative 3, then the x value is negative 4 because it's t minus 1. I'm just going to go and do this for the rest of these. Negative 2 would be negative 3. Negative 1 would be negative 2, 0 would be negative 1, 1 would be 0, and 2 would be a value of 1. Do the same thing to get the y values here. I plug in negative 3. Okay, let's see, that would be negative 6, negative 2. Plug in a negative 3, or a negative 2, my t value there. Negative 2 would give me 0. Negative 1 value there would give me 2. Negative 1 would give a positive, no, 0 would give me a 4. Remember, we're plugging in our t values. Okay? Value of t is 1 would give us a 6. Value of t equal to 2 would give us an 8. So the points that I'm going to plot are these. Negative 4, negative 2, 4, negative 2, negative 3, negative 0, or positive 0, neither, 0, okay, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 4, 0, 6, and 1, 8. So our function appears to be linear here. I'm going to, hit, going to go ahead and put arrows on this, indicating that as t increases, we begin from one end and go to the other. And that is our parametric curve. All right, let's do the same thing for this next one. x of t equals t squared minus 3. y of t equals 2t plus 1. And our values of t are ranging from negative 2 to 3. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And our x values are going to be 1. Plug in a value of negative 1, we should get negative 2. Plug in 0, we should get negative 3. And yes, that'd be, that would work. Plugging in a value of 1, we get negative 2. Plugging in a value of 2, we get 1. Plugging in 3, we get 6. All right, now this next one is linear. So plugging in a 0 would actually get me 1. And the slope is 2, so this should be 3, 5, 7, and then be negative 1, negative 3. Increasing by 2, going up. Decreasing by 2, going down. Now to plot these points, I have 1, negative 3, I have negative 2, negative 1, negative 3, 1, negative 2, 3, 1, 5, and 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
is 5. There we are. <clears throat> so beginning on this end, it appears that we are going to have a smooth graph here. Ending there. And it is going in this direction. So as we increase our values of t, we start at this one end point down here, 1, negative 3, and we increase up to 6, 7. And there's our curve. And there's the graph that those equations represent. All right. Example c, x of t equals 4 cosine t, y of t equals 4 sine t, and t ranges from 0 to 2 pi. So again, go ahead and take our t values, our x of t and our y of t. All right, I'm going to begin at 0. I'm going to go up to 2 pi. I'm going to go in pi over 2 increments. You can go in whatever increments you'd like. That's just what I'm going to go with. All right, so if we evaluate, cosine of 0 is 1, so that would give us 4. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Cosine of pi is negative 1, so that would make a negative 4 there. 3 pi over 2, cosine is 0. Cosine of 2 pi is 1. So that would be 4. Doing the same thing for sine. Sine of 0 is 0, so we get a value there. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so that would be 0, 4. Sine of pi is 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, so that would be a negative 4. And back at 2 pi, same thing as 0, so we have 0 there. So plotting these points, I have 4, 0, 0, 4, negative 4, 0, and 0, negative 4. And then we come back to that point. Now I'm going to attempt to draw this smoothly. I'm not going to give it justice, I know. Okay. So this should be, now if I increased or decreased my increments there, I should see that this is actually a circle. This is a circle. And we are moving in this direction. We are going counterclockwise. And that would be our curve. So our curve is a circle, or in my graph, something more of a rounded circle. All right. And we'll see in a later section how we can tell very quickly that, that is actually going to be a circle. All right, example two, eliminate the parameter for each of the plane curves described by the following parametric equations and then describe the resulting graph. So what we're going to do is actually create a function of y in terms of x. How we're going to do that is we're going to solve for t in one of these equations. I'm going to go ahead and solve the x equation, my x of t. I'm going to solve that for t. So this would be x squared equals 2t plus 4. Subtracting 4, x squared minus 4 equals 2t, which then gives me t equals x squared minus 4 over 2. Nothing crazy complicated about that. I've just isolated my t. Now when I go back to my y of t, that is 2t plus 1, replacing in my new value of t in terms of x, x squared minus 4 over 2. The 2's will reduce, and so I'll get x squared minus 4 plus 1. So x squared minus 3 is my equation without a t, so just in terms of y and x. So this would be, go ahead and sketch this look like, this would be a parabola opening up. However, we have a restriction on t. So my beginning value of t is negative 2, which would make that at 0. All right, so if I have t of negative 2, 
it gives me an x value of 0. If I want an accurate picture here, if I plug in negative 2, there I get negative 3. So my beginning value is actually the vertex of that parabola. Evaluating at 6 will give me a 4. 6, I get 13. So actually, this end of my graph does not work because my starting value is over here and my ending value is somewhere along here and it is traveling in that direction. So effectively it is a piece of a parabola. Alright, next. We are going to eliminate the variable with these. Now this is actually very similar to what you would do on that last question on 1c to see that it's actually a circle. But let's go ahead and go with this. First I'm going to isolate my t value. So this would be x over 4 equals cosine t, which means t equals arc cosine of x over 4. Well, taking my y value here, my y function, 3 sine t, well, rather than putting in t, I'm going to have arc cosine of x over 4. Now, I'm going to need a right triangle for this. All right, well, if the arc cosine, or if cosine, actually, we'll just go back to that. If cosine t equals x over 4, that means the adjacent, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so x, 4. So my opposite side here is the square root of 16 minus x squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem there. All right, so if I want to find the sine of that, the sine of that would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So this is 3 times square root of 16 minus x squared over 4. So that is my function. All right, now one thing is when we take the square root, we actually are implicitly, specifically saying the positive root, when in reality, as a graph, we have a plus or minus. So we have something along these lines, which is an ellipse. So I want to take just a side note here, and if I take this identity, so this is a separate way to realize the same concept, cosine squared plus sine squared t equals 1. If I square my x over 4 equals cosine t and my y over 3 sine t and my x over 4 equals cosine t is x squared over 16 plus y squared over 9 equals 1 which is the graph of a hyperbola with a major axis of 4 and a minor axis of 3. So that exactly matches what this is, and it will, in fact, be oriented this way. Because it's going from 0 to 2 pi, we should make a full ellipse there. All right, our last question, find two pairs of parametric equations to represent this graph. It's y equals 2x squared minus 3. The easiest choice is x equals t, which would then make y equal to 2x no longer an x, to t squared minus 3. That is one way to write that as a set of parametric equations. For the second, we really aren't restricted by anything. So I just went ahead and did something like this, 3t minus 2. If we take x equals 3t minus 2, well, let's substitute that into the other equation be 2x, uh, not do that yet, squared minus 3. If 
I replace that with 3t minus 2, that would be 9t squared minus 6 minus 12t plus 4 minus 3, and we would have 18t squared minus 24t plus 5 once we combine those terms. And so this, these two together, would be my set of parametric equations to represent that. Now, we haven't given any restrictions on t. That's one thing to note. It's because we're not given anything. We're not t is between 0 and 2 pi or anything like that. Then we can use whatever we want to rewrite those. All right, that is the end of this section. Feel free to look back over it if this is a little bit strange, but it is sort of a new concept. That's it.